Josh appeared in 184 episodes of Deadliest Cat. The disgraceful action from the past has come back to haunt Josh Harris. Josh Harris has been a key player on Deadliest Catch since his debut in 2007, when he navigated the challenging waters with his father and captain, Phil Harris. Following his father's stroke-related death in 2010, Josh had big shoes to fill, and he has done that excellently. However, the past returned to haunt him, and the truth about a horrible incident years ago just got him fired. What could be so terrible that the adored star of one of the biggest reality TV shows would be banned and immediately sent into retirement? Join us as we delve into the main reason why Josh Harris was fired from the deadliest cast. Who is Josh Harris? Josh Harris, whose real name is Joshua Grant Harris, was born in Seattle, Washington on March 18, 1983. He is 40 as of 2023. His parents are Phil Harris, his dad, and Mary Harris, his mother. He also has a younger brother known as Jacob Harris. The documentary reality show Deadliest Catch can only be completed by Josh's dad, Phil Harris, the captain and co-owner of the crab fishing vessel, Cornelia Marie. Josh Harris began his fishing career on the Time Bandit, a vessel in Alaska that served fishermen in the early 2000s. In 2007, he first teamed up with his father aboard the fishing vessel Cornelia Marie in Alaska's famous Bering Sea at the beginning of the third season. This first appearance was on Deadliest Catch. The show has behind-the-scenes footage worldwide. Along the same line, the presenter narrated the story of his younger brother, Jake Harris. When his father, Phil Harris, passed away in 2010, Josh became the new captain of Cornelia Marie and brought his brother with him. The Harris brothers, who started as the crowd favorites, naturally gained a lot of appreciation from the audience. Over time, Josh Harris's journey would extend beyond the main show, as he appeared in various spin-offs such as Deadliest Catch, Bloodline, Deadliest Catch, The Bait, and After the Catch. As the years passed, Harris became an integral figure on Deadliest Catch, guiding his crew through turbulent waters, literally and metaphorically. This was also done amidst the upheaval brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, he was the main star of Deadliest Catch, Bloodline, a series that showcased his exploration of the Hawaiian Islands using his late father's maps in what interested viewers as an emotional journey. However, after appearing in over 200 episodes, he suddenly stopped appearing on the show and his absence began to raise questions. The reason Josh was fired. Josh's passion for fishing dates back to his childhood when he learned the arts from his father, Phil. Josh was becoming a leader in this field and looking for ways to develop new and creative means of improvement every day. With a land to honor, Josh went willingly after the fishing footsteps of his father, gratifying himself for the high expectations placed on him. Again and again, he surpassed the very high expectations and displayed his natural ability and unwavering love for fishing. With his solid spirit and impressive skills on the high seas, Josh won viewers' hearts and became a beloved fan favorite over the years. In 2017, Josh bravely decided to take a break from Deadliest Catch and focus on his well-being. This pause in his journey allowed him to confront and overcome the struggles he had been trying to suppress for a while. After taking a year to recover, Josh returned to the show stronger and more determined than ever. Josh still motivates and delights crowds everywhere he goes. Deadliest Catch Bloodline, the spin-off version, was launched in 2020 and at the same time provided a great opportunity for the previous series to spread its popularity to the fans of the new version. It takes us to the port of Kona on the great island of Hawaii, and it introduces two Kona fishermen named Jeff Silva and Chris Casey McManus as they sail out upon the beautiful waters of Kona. Harris is very happy and excited about the whole situation. While Harris said there is a lot of business to be done in 2021, Josh has struck it lucky in both his personal and professional lives, in addition to having a successful fishing career. Despite not having tied the knot, Josh and his longtime partner, Jenna Bullis, have welcomed a kid into the world. Kinsley was born in 2013, and the two were good friends for over 10 years. 
According to Harris, Kinsley is a seven-year-old girl who is approaching her 30th birthday. The fact that Josh Harris has a young daughter adds to the heartbreak and shock of the news that was made public in September 2022 regarding his 1998 incident, in which he was found guilty of an appropriate and illegal act involving a minor, as revealed in a now-deleted video. This development changed Josh Harris's relationship with Deadliest Catch. According to a Reddit post from 1999, Josh Harris was arrested in July 1998 after it was alleged that he had committed a horrible crime against a young girl. The girl in question was allegedly a neighbor and the daughter of a deckhand, so she was a family friend. At the time, Josh would have been 15 or 16 years old. In addition, after the girl told her mother about the incident and the evidence was gathered from the crime scene, the mother reported the claim straight to the police because of delays in the processing of Harris's DNA. Harris wasn't officially arrested until 1999. After a search warrant was executed on March 25, 1999, and the materials seized were examined, the crime lab verified that the DNA match belonged to Josh. He was imprisoned at home with his father and stepmother following his detention. He was not allowed to interact with the victim or a minor under 12 without an adult supervision. Many admirers of Deadliest Catch find their feelings complicated by the reality that he and his father were confined to their home. The famous captain undoubtedly knew about his son's difficult past, but still permitted him to appear on a show that millions loved. The Snohomish County prosecutor charged Josh on October 4, 1999, for a serious crime involving a minor. The ambitious reality star reportedly agreed to a reduced charge of misbehavior and improper communication with the minor. Josh admitted on January 6, 2000, that on July 14, 1998, he had touched the victim in a way that would have made a normal person uncomfortable. He had also spoken to her inappropriately, discussing subjects unfit for her age. The Washington State Court records indicate that Harris was found guilty and given a nine-month sentence. It is also said that he participated in an assessment aimed at helping him understand and control his relationship and affection-related habits. Although the Discovery Channel has not spoken much about the case, it has made one very clear comment. Someone informed the media about this problem and said that Josh won't return to this series in any upcoming episodes. The channel has not publicly discussed the case's specifics, but this move clarifies their position. Shortly after the story surfaced, Discovery's website's deadliest catch bloodline part disappeared. A notice stating a page was not found welcomed fans. Currently, this page is not accessible. It was obvious that Discovery was working very hard to tidy up a sad and unsettling mess. Josh Harris had avoided the spotlight, posting nothing on social media since the summer of 2022, just before his dark history finally caught up with him. How the channel will handle the several programs Harris has previously starred in is still being determined. To remove Harris from the show, in which he was so extensively featured, would be a very big task. Harris also just recently appeared in Deadliest Catch Bloodline. Well, it's clear, he won't be making appearances in the spin-off in the future. For over a decade, Josh still reflected on the heartache he felt upon losing his father. It was extremely difficult for him to get back on water because that was where he and his father spent much time together. His brother also suffered some setbacks after their father's death. What happened to Phil Harris and how did it affect the brothers' lives? Captain Phil Harris. The FV Cornelia Marie, a crab fishing vessel featured in the Discovery Channel documentary reality TV series Deadliest Catch, was partially owned by Philip Charles Harris, an American captain. Harris began fishing with his father at the age of eight, and he also started fishing for crabs after high school. He started as an unpaid deckhand on a crab boat before showing his value. At 21, he was among the youngest captains of crab fishing boats operating in the Bering Sea. At the time of his passing, he had served as the F.V. Cornelia Marie's captain for over 20 years. An embedded video crew followed Harris and his boat for the television series Deadliest Catch, which started in 2004 and continued after his death. The F.V. Cornelia Marie debuted alongside the F.V. Maverick in the Opelio Crab segment of season one. Following the sinking of the FV Big Valley, 
the FV Cornelia Marie played a major role in the hunt for her. It started to appear regularly in the second season of the show. In the 2008 season, Harris was thrown from his bunk during a storm, believing he had fractured ribs. He coughed up blood for several hours before his sons and the crew convinced him to go to the doctor and get the film crew to keep an eye on his condition. His condition was eventually diagnosed as a pulmonary embolism by medical professionals. He had to undergo therapy for this condition, which kept him from fishing for about a year. In January 2009, he came back for the Opelio crab fishing season. Harris's book Deadliest Catch Desperate Hours featured some of his seafaring tales. Harris created the Captain's Reserve line of coffees in 2008. Mixes, including Harris Family Blend and Midnight Sunrise, are themed around fishing themes. Adding to his health problems was Harris's habit of chain smoking, which was regularly observed on the show. Harris had been married twice and divorced once, but he was single when he passed away. He married Mary Harris, the mother of his two kids, Joshua and Jacob, in his first marriage, which lasted from 1982 until 1991. Joshua and Jacob were deckhands on his fishing boat, the F.V. Cornelia Marie, while filming Discovery's Deadliest Catch. His second marriage to Teresa Harris started on January 22, 1992, and ended in divorce in 2006. He was born and raised in Bothell, Washington. He had a Chevrolet Corvette and a Harley-Davidson motorcycle, and enjoyed driving fast. In addition to fast driving and fishing, he liked to construct bird feeders. Harris founded Captain's Reserve, a coffee company, before his passing. His sons are currently growing the family business and marketing the brand. In January 2011, the national retail sector began to expand, and that same year, it went global. Harris suffered a stroke during the sixth season of Deadliest Catch, which was televised. On January 29, 2010, on St. Paul Island, Alaska, he was offloading crab. A surgical-induced coma was used to lower intracranial pressure and swelling after he was airlifted to Anchorage. After his health improved, he came out of a coma. Along with other improvements, he was chatting and squeezing hands. The fact that Harris was making progress in a matter of days, rather than the months that stroke victims typically need to recover, surprised Harris's physicians. On February 9, 2010, Harris passed away, however, due to a cerebral hemorrhage. He was cremated, and half of his ashes were buried in an ornately painted Harley-Davidson motorcycle gas tank with the remains of his mother. His family spread the remainder of the ashes at sea from aboard the F.V. Cornelia Marie. In a statement, his sons Jacob and Joshua, on behalf of the Harris family, said, We are very sorry to have to say goodbye to our father, Captain Phil Harris. Dad was a warrior from the beginning and remained so to the end. He was a person who never gave up on us or the staff. We are going to honor and remember that strength. We appreciate all of your well wishes and prayers. Ultimately, Joshua would take over as Cornelia Marie's new captain. Deadliest Catch's sixth season included footage of Harris working for the final time. On Friday evening, April 30, 2010, the Discovery Channel held a memorial service for Harris on Seattle's waterfront at the Smith Cove Cruise Terminal at Pier 91. This was the night before Puget Sound's traditional opening day of the boating season. At this service, his son spoke from where his boat is based in Elliott Bay, and a boat sent out one last salute after his father, Phil Harris, passed away on February 9, 2010, due to a pulmonary embolism, Jake Harris turned to substances that were addictive and has struggled with addiction ever since. According to reports, he has been charged with three DUIs, the most recent of which occurred in May 2021, and one lesser DUI. He acknowledged that it took him some time to figure out what he truly wanted from life when he appeared on Dr. Drew's HLN show in 2011. He said that he tried to fill the hole in his heart with things that weren't good for him. The producers of Deadliest Catch did not try to hide the fact that Jake Harris struggled with substance use issues. Once in charge of his dad's crab fishing boat, and while grieving his father, those challenges worsened for Harris. In an earlier season, before he became a main character, Harris opened up about his opiate use to his dad. He had injured himself as a boy while skateboarding and to manage the pain, he became dependent on opiates. 
In the show, Harris told his father, via Republic World, it's hard to admit to one of your heroes in life that you need help. By the end of season six, Jake Harris had checked into rehab. In season eight, both Josh and Jake return to the series, but they are manning different boats this time. By the end of that season, Jake Harris appeared to be once again struggling with addiction. He'd also been robbed and beaten. When the series returned in 2013, and without much explanation, Jake Harris was abruptly gone. Following a dispute with a ranger in Washington's Bayview State Park that resulted in a police pursuit, Jake was taken into custody. Josh Harris revealed in April 2021 that Jake has been doing well and taking baby steps, and that spending time with his family has helped him process his father's death. In May 2021, Jake was reportedly arrested again for DUI, driving while his license was revoked suspended, and driving without an ignition interlock when required. However, since then, it seems that Jake has managed to stay out of trouble with the law. While Jake struggled with substance abuse issues, he eventually made a return to Discovery Channel. He appeared in a single episode of Deadliest Catch Season 16, which aired in 2020. And in 2021 and 2022, they appeared in a handful of Deadliest Catch, Bloodline episodes. That spin-off series followed his older brother Josh and co-captain Casey McManus as they explored Phil Harris's old fishing grounds in Hawaii. The consequences of Josh's action. The fallout from Harris's case also affected Casey McManus, another fisherman on Deadliest Catch. McManus had joined the series as co-captain of the boat in 2014 to support Josh in sustaining his late father's business. McManus would also remain even after Josh's brother Jake dropped out due to grief for their father and his struggles with drug addiction. Following the sexual assault allegations against Harris, Discovery Channel chose not to renew the contracts of either Harris or Cornelia Marie for the upcoming season. As expected, McManus lost his job, at least in the television realm. In response to the firing, McManus tweeted his disappointment with the situation. He also mentioned other negative situations in the crab fishing industry that had affected him since the pandemic. It is unknown how far the events surrounding Harris went and the subsequent repercussions on the Deadliest Catch series and its cast. Two seasons have aired since Harris's departure, and given the circumstances, a comeback from the once beloved fisherman is almost impossible. The reality show, Deadliest Catch and the spin-off. The American reality television series, Deadliest Catch, premiered on the Discovery Channel on April 12, 2005. During the Alaskan king crab and snow crab fishing seasons, the show follows crab fishermen on fishing vessels in the Bering Sea. The fishing fleet's operational hub is Dutch Harbor, Alaska's Aleutian Islands port. The show's name, created for the Discovery Channel, comes from the great danger of harm or death that comes with working in this field. During two crab fishing seasons, the October king crab season and the January opilio crab season, the show follows a fisherman's life in the Bering Sea aboard different crab fishing vessels. While gale force winds and high waves constantly lash the deck, the show points out the dangers that the fishermen and camera crews face as they move hundreds of pounds of crab across a dangerous deck. Duck-heavy crab pots swinging into position and lean over the rails to position pots for launch or retrieval. Every episode centers around a narrative, circumstance, or idea on one or more boats. On the other hand, side stories focus on the personal histories and daily lives of one or two crew members, especially the inexperienced greenhorns who work on multiple vessels. The fleet captains are clearly shown, showcasing their connections with their crews, their friendship with other captains, and their competition with other boats in the crab hunt. The Fleet Brothers, Sig, Norm, and Edgar Hansen own the Northwestern. The Hillstrand Brothers and Jonathan's son Scotty on the FV Time Bandit. Brothers Keith and Monty Colburn of The Wizard. The stresses of life on the Bering Sea. And the high rate of burnout among greenhorns are among the common themes. Friendly rivalries among the captains, particularly between Sig Hansen of the FV Northwestern and Jonathan and Andy Hillstrand of the FV Time Bandit, are common themes. The U.S. Coast Guard rescue helicopters based at Integrated Support Command Kodiak, Alaska and their outpost on St. Paul Island near the northern end of the crab fishing grounds 
are frequently seen rescuing crab boat crew members who fall victim to the harsh conditions on the Bering Sea because Alaskan crab fishing is one of the world's most dangerous jobs. The episodes about the loss of the FV Big Valley in January 2005, the loss of the FV Ocean Challenger in October 2006, and the loss of the FV Katmai in October 2008 all heavily featured the USCG Rescue Squad. In anticipation of such events, Original Productions maintains a camera team stationed with the Coast Guard during the show's filming. For Discovery Channel, Deadliest Catch consistently receives strong ratings. Its third season brought in over 49 million people overall and over 3 million viewers per first-run episode, making it one of the most popular cable TV shows in 2007. Season 6's total ratings were over 10% higher than those of Season 5, and as a result, Deadliest Catch consistently secures the Tuesday 9 o'clock to 10 p.m. EST primetime telecast window in the United States. On June 22, 2010, blown off course, the first of five episodes that dealt with Phil Harris's stroke and its impact received 5.2 million viewers, more than 10% more than Slow Burn, which had recorded a record-breaking 4.6 million viewers for the season opener. With 8.5 million viewers on July 13, 2010, the episode Redemption Day, which covered Harris's death toward the show's end, set yet another record for the show's viewership and became the third most watched broadcast in Discovery Channel history. According to a 2016 New York Times analysis of the 50 TV series with the most Facebook likes, Deadliest Catch was popular in rural, chilly, and seaside regions, especially in Maine and Alaska. Bloodline, the show's spin-off, kicked off on the 14th of April and follows Josh Harris, the son of legendary Bering Sea Captain Phil Harris. Josh and his business partner Casey McManus discover a trove of Hawaiian fishing charts scribbled with Captain Phil's handwriting. Josh takes the opportunity to travel to the islands and learn about his father's time there decades earlier. In contrast to the program's usual setting in the Bering Sea, during crab fishing season, Bloodline is set in Hawaii. The show's three seasons follow fisherman Josh Harris, his business partner Casey McManus, and Jeff Silva as they investigate scribbles and notes found on Hawaiian fishing charts left by Josh's late father, Phil Harris. Bloodline was launched the same day as the season 16 premiere episode of Deadliest Catch. Josh and his business partner, Casey McManus, venture to the Hawaiian Kona coast in search of ahi tuna and to learn about Phil's time spent there in the 1980s. While in Hawaii, Josh and Casey team up with a local commercial fisherman, Jeff Silva, to help better understand the coastal fishery, translating Phil's charts and notes and guiding them on their new endeavor, catching tuna, each worth about $2,000. The hunt will also include barracuda, swordfish, and other underwater species. Jonathan Hillstrand, former co-captain of Deadliest Catch's Time Bandit, appears on the show and meets with Josh, Casey, and Jeff to help answer questions about Phil's possible motives for fishing in Hawaiian waters. Where is Josh Harris now? Undeniably, since Josh was reportedly arrested and faced allegations, there has been a noticeable absence of activity on his social media accounts. Furthermore, we must remember that Josh has just started a new phase in his life as a married man and a lovely father of two girls. Deadliest Catch has shown that it will no longer distribute royalties on Josh's equipment. So, the logical inference is that there is very little probability that Josh will be featured in the show or any of its series spin-offs. In 2022, Harris made a significant appearance in the third season of Deadliest Catch. Furthermore, its popularity continues beyond TV, as Bloodline can be streamed on demand through online platforms. However, it is worth noting that, relative to other shows in the genre, it appears that the show was removed from the channel's website and is unavailable to stream on the Discovery Plus app. The reason behind the show being banished from the website and streaming service was a possible influence from the network itself of not associating with Josh and his so-called past unethical act, which was a violation of the network's ethical principles and values. Thank you for watching. Let's hear your thoughts about these discoveries. Also, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting adventures. Stay tuned for more.